right, so today we're going to do a less structured tutorial than the Pokemon Centers or Learning About Brooves. Um, I built this compound and it was inspired by a few different pictures of Mediterranean buildings and North African castles. Um, so I kind of pieced it together just room by room. So instead of doing a this is exactly how we do it, I'll be talking a bit about what I'm doing but also just discussing how to keep building something especially when it's not really working at the start or you're not exactly sure where you're trying to go. So for the first part I really decided I wanted to try and build something over the water but not something necessarily on stilts. I just want something that was incorporating that sort of lake around it. So the first thing I started to decided to do was just fill in a section where I wanted my main room. One of the first pictures I looked at when I was thinking about this had a big open sort of what looked like an entertaining area on the right hand side with a little corridor going down leading off to a set of rooms that I couldn't see on the left. So using that little bit of imagination I wanted to start building just the part that I could see and then probably at that time I figured grab a few different photos to piece to together the bits that I couldn't see. So in the picture I was using there was some really sort of nice intricate textured designs on the front. Obviously we can't do exactly that so I had to play around a little bit more but the first thing I wanted to do here was just create a wall that sort of gave me an idea of where I wanted to go. So I've used the Adobe and um, those matching lattice uh, windows and that even just doing this one wall helps me sort of confirm is this going to match the style of the building, the pictures that I'm looking at and is it what I want to do. And so now that I've got a single wall I want to start using a reference photo to make it look like the building I'm trying to build. The hard thing with reference photos is don't get discouraged when you first start building if it doesn't immediately look exactly like what you want it to look like. Um, sometimes the hardest thing is just being confident that what you're doing will turn into something better and we'll see in a little bit in this video we actually take a little break to do some decorating to help us get a little bit more inspired to keep building. And so now that I've got a very basic window down I'm just going to try and attempt a few different ways to get across the sort of curved design of the windows. Obviously we can't do curves and without being able to chisel the underside of blocks we're always going to have a slight blocky effect and I really think sometimes you do just need to lean into it and accept that that's how it is um, as opposed to trying to cover it up too much. As long as you've got other details around it it will end up still looking nice in the end. So I go back later and do some changes to that window but I feel like that represents right now enough of what we're trying to do. I'll put in some more curves soon but for now I want to work on making it look like that second level just to give it a bit more dimension. Again sometimes when you start a build it's just about doing the bits you want to do that are going to inspire you to keep building so that you don't abandon it. We all have a lot of abandoned projects here and there. So the next part I wanted to start doing is the little uh, hallway I talked about that went off to the left. One thing I am going to try to do here is a little bit of fast forwarding. I did end up going on and taking a while going back and forth with a lot of these designs. So I figured if I fast forwarded a bit of it you could see what I'm doing without having to wait in great detail. Now with this side entrance I do want it to be, even though it won't be visible from the front, um, a pretty main entrance area. So I want to have a nice set of curves for the doorway arch. So the first thing I'm going to do knowing that I'm going to have a second level is just set out what level that second story floor will be on so that when I'm working on this curve I'm attempting I don't end up going too high and then realizing I have to re-establish either the curve or the balcony at the front. And so once we've done it there isn't much rhyme or reason to it 
I tried to just do about five or six wide um, and then chisel down like a half block, full block, half block. Um, and then if you leave maybe two sets that are either two halves or two holes, it can give it a little bit more variation. Um, but this is definitely on the basic side of what you can do. I kind of wanted to show here that you didn't have to go too deep and think too much about how intricate those designs are as long as you have something else to draw the eye and as we'll see and as you would have saw at the start of the video for us it's going to be greenery we're going to be able to get away with making it a little less intricate than it could be a little bit more basic but the greenery and the plants is going to add a lot more detail and draw away from the more basic parts of the structure So at first it starts looking like a little bit of a space invader situation, um, which is why we're just going to, like I said, chisel in a few bits of basic design. And I know I want to cover this with lush leaves to some extent. So as long as we're partially covering some of the curves, um, they're not going to be, again, drawing the eye. Same with those big blank spaces with the adobe. That's not going to be too obvious later down the track. So we don't need to focus too much on the bits that don't look good right now. As sometimes if you just keep building, things will start looking better as they go along. So like I said here, we just added a little bit more detail to that front window and I've decided that I'm just going to do a pretty much matching window on the other side like the doorway. Um, and then I also want to make sure that we've got a matching window in the back as well and in a few other rooms. Um, even with a basic design like this, it's a good idea to just keep a few matching features like that throughout a building just to make it look a little bit more continuous. So we had the arch crenulation, the sort of arch designs, I should say, um, available. And I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to use them because they are obviously perfectly round. First, I wasn't sure if it was going to make it too obvious that the rest of my curves weren't round. But like I said before, I decided to just sort of lean into it. Just, I decided that as long as I was confident in the design that it was going to kind of play out and I played with a few different options and decided that if I took away the bottom blocks um, a great thing would be that you'd be able to see that sort of natural curve and that's something that if we keep the sky visible in the back we'll again keep drawing the eye to that section. So now that I've done that I've decided I want to work a little bit just on that second level um, just to give it a little bit more of a complete functionality at the front again just more for my eye so that I can get an idea of if I'm doing the right thing so the first thing is we're just going to fill in the section that we know is going to be the uh, roof of the pub and then put in a similar sort of balcony design like we have for the underneath again just for continuity and I've decided to use the red um, because we're going to also use coffee beans um, as one of the main decoration items and they have the big red coffee berries on them and so once I have started filling this in in the picture there's sort of like a nice wooden canopy at the front of this picture so I wanted to just to try a few different designs but I found in the end the best way to make a design um, you'll see using the grading is just to fill something in and then chip blocks away so once I've got this section down I want to have it so that the balcony canopy is just slightly lower than the roof just to give it a little bit of variation so to do that I'm just putting in some blue marker blocks first and that's going to just make sure that I know that it is the exactly one block higher and then I can go back and get rid of them I always recommend having a bunch of brightly colored chalk to do different markings just to make it a bit easier for the eye to see so now that I know that's going to fit and I won't need to change it later, I can go ahead and fill in what I want to be the grating. So I did try and do a pattern, but like I said, because I hadn't pre-planned the size, it wasn't going to work out. So it was easier for me to actually just fill it in and then go through and just chip out 
great until I found a design that worked and because I was planning to cover this later anyway, I figured we didn't have to worry too much about um, exactly what the design is. We just wanted something that looked a little bit different. And so similarly with the wall, we wanted I wanted to put a little design on it, but nothing too exciting. So I decided to do a little bit of a trellis. And so to do that, we're just going to do one block out of the brick matching the walls and chisel them down just so they're not too chunky. We don't want them standing out too much. And then I'm just putting wooden fencing in between it to make a lattice. So in, we may need to go and remove some of the lattice pieces to attach leaves to them later. But the good thing with the lush leaves is they take up a square of four while only needing to touch a square of one. So you can have things covering that lattice quite easily. And so now I'm feeling a little bit stuck actually at this point of the build i'm doing the lattice and things because i'm really not sure where to go from here so we're going to take pretty much a little decoration break um, i find this can be really helpful um, to help you inspire you to finish the build and just really solidify what your actual idea is so this is where i sort of started working out that we are going to use the coffee beans um, obviously that area of the world as well is known for making coffee but also the red really fits in with the adobe and it's a nice accent to all the green we're going to have around and so I'm going to lay down right now some planter boxes where I want some of my decoration because what we're going to do for our main decoration is use crops but we're going to use a little trick that I'm going to show you in a different smaller video where we're going to use some half grown crops and they actually stay in their partially grown size as long as you take them out of a piece of tilled earth. So here we can see as long as these are all on soil they're going to stay in their partial growth and we've got all the seeds behind so that I can work out which ones are which plants. Now I haven't really put the last of any of those plants in because we can alter mallet the very last but we can't ulti mallet any of these. It's a little bit more of a process like I said I'll do a quick video but essentially we need to keep an eye on them. So I'm using coffee buckwheat and gladiola seeds the flowers we want to be fully grown anyway so we don't need to worry about them but we want the coffee not just in its fully grown stage but in its three different stages of white flowers so we can see here if we start taking these out of the planters now as long as um, they're not on tilled earth they won't grow any further and they won't die either the only exception to this is the water plants um, you have to have them in water like your sugarcane and stuff. They will wilt even though they're not technically growing. And so generally what I do once I know that I have all of the plants that I want, I move them back. I think the best way is to just move them one forward um, while you're doing the grow. And that way you can work out, um, you don't want them all to be growing too small or too high and then take them out and have them to grow them again. So I suggest doing them in rows in the way you plan to present them later. So for the last part of this section of the build, um, doing that little bit of decorating sort of made me a bit more inspired to work out what these rooms were going to be and help build them. So it made me realise if we're going to have that front entertaining area, we probably wanted some kind of nice open cooking area behind it. So I decided to start building back to where the earth was and I wanted to build in uh, at first I thought it was going to be a kitchen but it ends up being a pub um, and I wanted to have lots of like crates and coffee plants and things like that in there and hopefully a fire as well to draw an eye towards all the sort of vegetation we'll have back there. And so once I've got this little bit done I take a break um, because I was sort of struggling at this point I wanted to walk away and just do something else and have a think about it. So in the next part we'll talk about um, how once you've sort of got a, a half done structure like this when you're feeling lost what you can do next. Um, as you can see 
I ended up building it and it's still not done. It's quite a large structure, but around where we stopped, I wasn't sure what I was doing. Um, so I'll give you a few tips on just how to stay inspired. It's not always easy. Sometimes it's best to just go away and build something else. Um, but I'll go through a few different ways that I find tend to help me restart a, a half done building. And I'll see you guys soon.